Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Reynolds, and I'm going to help you sing and perform more like the top artists around the world. I'm a professional voice teacher, performance coach, and opera stage director. I've helped thousands of singers around the world learn the techniques and methods that got the top singers to where they are. So for those of you who haven't seen the one of three video of this series, I mean, you sponsor me to make some new stories and it's kind of fun. See how you do. I want to show you how it works here real quick. If you get your phone out and download the Amino app, go here on Amino. If you go here under BTS, you'll find all kinds of really cool stuff, K-pop stuff, communities. So check it out. Really, really awesome. Go on here and you try to find me. Go ahead and put in Dr. Mark and you'll see me there at the top. Follow me and you're gonna see here when you go under me that there's my first story, my second story. Check them out, let me know what you think. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Also stay tuned, I'll be adding more stories as time goes on and the quizzes will get harder. We'll also have a wider variety of different topics and singers to test your fanship and see how well you do. Don't forget to follow. On to the final 303 video of BTS's High Notes and Falsettos compilation. Here we go. Okay, we talked about how to get that falsetto sound. How do I get this whiny forward sound then? Sound like Sam Smith or sound like these guys when they're really clear and bright. Do this to me, they go, wah! You just make efficient noise. Don't try to press it or force it. Keep it open here, wah, wah, wah! Just like your baby crying, trying to make an obnoxious noise until you can make that sound so it's as resonant, but as easy here. When you do, try to sing and keep that same sound and see what happens. Now, don't judge it as you're singing. It might sound awful and horrible and miserable to you as you're singing, but go back, record it, listen to it, and compare it and see if it's relatively close. I think you're gonna find it helps you get this clearer, cleaner, more substantial sound up in that high register that we usually associate with falsetto, but sounds so much cleaner and crisper and more substantial. Important point when we're hearing high notes like that one, you'll notice if you listen to that breath flow that he's not pushing at the high note. He's not all of a sudden trying to throw everything he has at the high note. Instead, he's keeping it really consistent and trusting the mic to deliver the sound. It sounds more intense because it's higher, but he's not putting more at it. He's not pushing at it. He's not throwing more air at it. He's not putting more muscle behind it. That's really, really important. Subconsciously, in most people's brain, they think higher note, push harder, work harder, it's gotta be harder because it's higher. Nope. Okay, one of the things to point out here as well is that this idea of placement, it's either forward or back, are not necessarily mutually exclusive. Once you feel like you're able to get this kind of back, warm, soft, falsetto place, and you're able to get this whiny, forward, bright, clear space, then try to do both at the same time. You're gonna notice that this kind of stretch feeling where we're stretching forward to get this buzz, but back to get this openness, 
is going to create its own unique sound and that this sound that we're hearing just a bit ago is really similar to that sound. Okay, two things here. One, I want to point out again, this leaning back or leaning forward thing. Don't confuse that. You'll notice they're singing other notes a lot that are even higher than the ones they're singing when they're doing that in other moments where they don't have to do it at all. So if you're thinking that that's what you do when you sing high notes, no. That's what you do when you're a pop singer, you're in a huge arena, and you're wanting to express that this moment is really exciting and you're wanting to make it seem bigger and higher and you're wanting to get the, engage the audience with the emotion of it. It's an emotion expressive thing, not a technique thing. And you wanna make sure that you can do it without that first because doing those things can actually make it a lot harder and introduce tensions that you don't want. Does it mean that they're intrinsically bad? No, we should be able to do all kinds of positions and still sing well, but if you're starting and just trying to figure it out, that's not the starting place you want to go. Other thing I want to point out here is there's a moment here just a second ago where you saw him put his tongue out through his mouth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He kind of did the lizard tongue a little bit. Now, in that moment, I think he's just licking his lips because his lips were probably dry in that moment. That's what it looked like. Um, but if you are getting tight here and tense, kind of sticking the tongue out just a little bit is going to help release that. Is that something that you want to do all the time? No, that's actually a sign to most voice teachers that there's tongue tension that they need to release because people with a lot of tongue tension will start doing that subconsciously without even realizing it. But if you're getting tight and tense, you can even do that same action inside your mouth without actually sticking your tongue out of your mouth by just kind of keeping the tongue behind these bottom teeth and just pushing it forward a little bit. That's going to remind your body to release that tongue, disengage those muscles and keep it more passive. Other thing that I love that I'm watching here is that what's going on with the facial expression and the neck and the body if as we're watching these back to back you'll notice that the physical expression is not necessarily tied to what's going on technique wise they're able to keep this face relatively relaxed and passive and without much expression on it and still sing really easily and comfortably they're able to engage it with a lot of expression and still keep that sound consistent same thing with the body so where do we start well there's two ways to go about it one is to start with just releasing all tension and being in that face, in these strap muscles, in the body that is not needed to make the sound. Eliminate all the unnecessary tension in your body and learn to be able to, and learn to be able to sing with that. That's where a voice teacher or vocal coach will come into play and help you determine what tensions to release and how to release them. But that's one approach. The other approach is to actually swing the other way and really take time to understand the emotions and the intent and the expressive side and make sure that as you're singing that you are paying attention to that, the parts of your body that should be expressing it, your hands, your face, your legs, and making sure that those parts of your body are doing the expression and that it's not creeping into the rest of your body and practicing feeling those emotions without it getting tight and tense here or tight and tense here. So either way are great ways to kind of work towards the middle and find the balance there.
what can we learn from these last bits that we were just watching? That the moments before we sing the high note are actually the most crucial. They're the ones where we have to prepare mentally to make sure that we aren't grabbing here in our stomach muscles. We aren't starting to constrict and get tight tense here in our throat, in our jaw, in our tongue. We aren't kind of gearing up for this moment. We're just keeping suspended and reminding our body just to keep it consistent and easy and free. It takes a lot of mental work and it takes a lot of preparation not to grab and anticipate this high note. So we're anticipating the high note, but not in the way our body usually does. We're anticipating it by trying to not anticipate it. Wait, what? I think you get what I mean. One thing that I love that I'm watching here is what's going on with their shoulders. You'll notice that when they're singing, those shoulders aren't creeping up around their ears. That's something we see all the time in performers, especially when they're getting up and performing and they're not really comfortable with performing yet, is these shoulders like to creep up here. Don't keep them down. Be careful that we're not pulling them back e either and kind of doing this pushing our chest out thing either. That's not where we want. We also don't want them to roll and collapse forward. The way to think about it is if you take a really big deep breath, feel those lungs expand. Now try to let that breath go without having the rib cage collapse. Try to keep it nice and open with those shoulders relaxed. If you also imagine that there's more space behind those sh back shoulder blades, that will also help open things without it getting tight in the back or without super rolling forward. It's gonna feel a little bit like it's more open in the back than maybe you're used to. But if you watch in that mirror, you're going to notice it's not collapsing forward. It's just rolling those shoulders so they're sitting in a nice, relaxed, comfortable place and not getting tight and tense. I love how relaxed they keep their body. Excellent. <laughs> Notice how consistent that high note sound is? First thing you want to do as you're trying to figure this out is just whine it up there on a single vowel the whole time. Instead of, instead of trying to put the consonants in there right away, that's going to break up that airflow. Get in the habit and teach your body to keep that nice legato line first. Another really cool tip, as you're going up to those high notes, plie, meaning just put some bend in those knees and make sure that from before you start going up to that high note till after you're done, that you're bending your knees all the way down. That does two things. It keeps your body from locking up and getting tight. Two, it subconsciously kind of undermines this idea of tight, tense, up, work harder as you're going down. It helps release the tension in that body. Everybody
You see pushing tightness tension there? No, he's relying on that whine and that open space in the back to create both the buzz and the richness and the fullness and letting the mic do its job. Mm, so nice. As always, love listening to these guys, love watching these guys. I think the consistency of their sound and how well it fits the song and the moment, it gives us the balance of contrast and consistency all together. Fits the songs, fits what they're doing physically without getting tight and tense in their body. Just such excellent performance ship. Love it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below. Comment with what you like, what you're seeing. Comment with, down below with tips, tricks, ideas, thoughts that have helped you sing high notes easier and more consistently. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Don't forget to check out the Amino app and look me up there. Don't forget to check me out on Scaleabout. It's a great way to get a quick personalized response from me or to see if we might be a good fit for lessons. And of course, if you want a voice lesson, a performance coaching, or want me to work with you or your group to help you sing easier or perform at a consistently higher level, book a time with me at mrperformingartstudio.com. I look forward to working with you online.